Yo, what up? It's your boy, I'm JJ Stone, a.k.a. Black Gritty. Welcome to another episode of Gritty Nights. Uh, my tagline is I'm in these streets, but I'm about to pass it off to my boy. I'm at least let him have 50-50 because uh, I think E-Rock might be in these streets more than me. I think you might be in these streets way more than me, bro. Listen, I, it's a busy time of year for me. It's football season, and I just love this team so much. I'm very fortunate that to travel along and be at the games and be at the home games. And, yes, I am indeed. Maybe not in these streets. I'm definitely in these <laughs> in these parking lots, you know, hey, if you know uh, what I mean. I'm yeah. in these parking lots. Hey, you had to get to D.C. somehow. You know what I mean? I know you ain't fly down there, so you was yeah, definitely sir. in those streets. Uh, so some inside baseball, E-Rock, uh, I talked to him Monday, and his voice was gone, boy. Your voice was – you were shot Monday. Um, that was a stressful last game. I'm sure we're going to get all sorts of into it, but that was a stressful last game, and that was one of those games where you leave, talking about it, McGrady, PG, help I, me out, I think we almost lost. I, I had my I – like, I, I literally closed my eyes and I muted the television, and then I opened one eye. <laughs> Oh, and so beautiful. you know uh before we even get into it you know like you you, you got the family unit you know you, you do a lot of stuff with the family my daughter yeah. has reserved herself after uh starting last year she will only watch home games with me you know I, she, this year she finally wants to go to an eagles game i told her like look i was like i don't know if you're ready yet you know what i mean she's 16 now so now we can go um yeah, and uh, she she gets a permit. She could drive us home safely. You know what I'm saying? I could I could put her to work, but she's like, I'm only going to watch home games with you because you get too crazy, and we always win at home. So I feel better being at home. Well, yeah, at least half, you're around your people. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so halftime, I mean, we were we were both going through. Like she got up, she's just walking and pacing. I'm like, see, see, now it ain't just me. And at the end of the game, like literally she's standing in the like but the way the tv is she's standing in the dining room looking at my reaction for the tv because she's like i can't look at this i can't look at it so uh your voice was lost for a good reason you were in the house and it was just it was just a crazy ending to a normal dallas defeat and i'm going to let you speak on second but i will say this <coughs> that's what happens in with dallas now if you think they're going to go and split that's fine you know why because there's no pressure they're at home and they've already mm. lost. Mm. But when they came here, all the whole world wanted to see this game. And they had nine opportunities to win it, and they couldn't close out. What, what, what was your big takeaway from the game, besides almost having a heart attack and losing your voice? Well, it was, it was a, a, the most Cowboys way of losing the game, right? Having opportunity after opportunity after opportunity and failing to punch it into the end zone. And really, that's all it took. I was with my jiu-jitsu instructor you know i'm karate mark yep and um i turned to him no less than five times and was just like man this is this is a lot to take in right now <laughs> this is just a lot emotionally i'm at a 10 i can't take any more of this uh i can't crank it up a notch i'm losing my voice but it was one of those games that you kind of look back on and you know, there was a lot in made about in the media leading up to the game about, you know, is the Cowboys and Eagles rivalry dead? Is, is these old heads, are they just, they couldn't understand, like a younger fan couldn't understand why these old heads were getting so cranked up. The, the 90s babies, like, you know, me and you, that have, had to yeah. live through it and live through the uh, how many rings you got and the memes of the Super Bowl trophy case being empty and the ring pop meme that is the only – you know, I mean, all the teasing and the and the heckling that we used to get by just like scumbag Cowboys fans who weren't even really Cowboys fans. They would they were just like kids who grew up and the fathers didn't hug them enough, so they decided to buy a Dallas starter jacket and throw it on and feel like a winner. That's the only way they could feel like a winner. And that's the God's honest truth. I mean, that's the, yeah. the origin story of a lot of these jokers here. So it was nice to see a game and be able to point to it and go, that's why. That's why – the Eagles Cowboys rivalry is still alive. That's why I understand that they sucked and they blew and the Quincy Joneses of the world and the Tony Romos who are inevitably going to not make the playoffs or choke it away in the playoffs. And now you got your Dak Prescott. So I realized that like Dallas, you never lived long enough for them. Most of them didn't live long enough to have seen their last championship, but they're dangerous. And when they win, they're absolutely obnoxious. So I feel like, you know, if you were going to point and say, why is the Eagles Dallas Cowboys rivalry just so important? Just point to that game and just highlight that and be like, well, now you know. And it's just a simple fact of life, right? So I hate Michael Jordan. 
and people who talk to me and try to tell me that Michael Jordan is the best, one of the main reasons I hate Michael Jordan is because I was in high school and we were all wearing Sixer starter jackets and the swishy hammer pants. And next thing I know, People were wearing red and white, and it was like a gang war. And I'm like, bro, you don't even know where Chicago is on the map, bro. But everybody yeah. became a Bulls fan, and Michael Jordan is the best, and I'm a Bulls fan. And then he wins the six championships. Next thing I know, I am I got my season tickets. I'm at the Sixers game, and I see the same people sitting next to me rooting on the Sixers. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, no, you were no. a Bulls fan, bro. <laughs> Basically, you're just a bandwagon fan, and, and you try to pass down to your kid that Michael Jordan's like, I suffered when Barkley left. Like, yeah. I was I, I suffered before we got AI. I suffered after AI. I was I was in the building with hip hop was my mascot. And now oh, you wanna come jacked and up bunny. <laughs> yeah, like oh my boy was rolling. Like so when when the Cowboys fans were out here do what they're doing, I'm like, I know why you're doing it, and it makes it even worse to me because you just jumped on this bandwagon. And before then, you know there was a lot of Philadelphia Steelers fans, you know, like you know, you used to see it back when I was a kid, and they kind of faded away really quick. But I feel like those guys jumped on the Cowboys, and then they raised their kids to be Cowboys, and it's just gross. So yes, there's a rivalry. Yes, it means something. Just because I got to deal with people in my own family, I got cousins that I'm ashamed of. Like I, I know your father, I know your dad. Who raised? Like nobody raised you to do this, but yeah. you know. Did their dad hug him enough? I, I sometimes feel like that's the problem. Like they just didn't feel like winners. Their daddy told them they were losers, and they go, "I'll show you, daddy. I'll show you. I'm a winner. I'm gonna buy a Yankees jacket and a Lakers hat and a, and, a, and a Cowboys poster, and I'm gonna put it on my bedroom wall, and I'm gonna get something from Duke. I don't know, whatever, a T-shirt, and I'm gonna feel like a winner because I can always lay back on that easy. It's a mental illness. It really is. I can always lean back on that comfort zone being like, well, how many championships you got? And then I'm going to win every argument. So even when I lose, I win. And it's just it's just the weakest mentality I've ever seen. Uh, uh, ever I'm not, seen. I'm not going to put their name out in the street, but I know somebody's got two sons. The dad's an Eagles fan. The one son is a Commanders fan. The other son's a Cowboys fan. And their thing is, we're a family that competes. We like competition. We, I was like, no, what? You're, 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 do, you're, do, you're I, do I know this person? <laughs> you know, I, on the I, I look, I'm not trying to bash them by for their stupidity, but I'm like hearing that excuse is that, and that's why you're a, a Commanders fan. That's why you're a Cowboy because your dad's an Eagles fan. Yo, know, I've talked about dad losing all the time. Now I, I just wanted to. I was like, okay, I just like I said, stupidity, stuff in the water. We got to George W. at the end of the day, yeah. and even the the thing that cracks me up the most is, um. Uh, Jalen's running too much. The team is running too much. They're running for 200 yards a game. I, got, I just want them to pass the ball. It doesn't matter. Oh, he passed for 300 something yards. Are you happy now? Well, not really because uh, now AJ is arguing with him on the sideline and I don't feel like enough people are getting ball. He needs to spread. Okay. Now, again, they're not running, but he's passing for 300 yards a game. Do you know why they're not running? Because they're passing. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, you you wanted him to stand in the pocket and show you that he could deliver down the field. AJ Brown breaks Megatron's record, and now all you can say is he's not running. He's more hurt than he really is. When he tells you nine <coughs> two times that he's not hurt, and it comes out as just a bone bruise. Obviously, we don't know the specifics of it. Sure. But why can't we be happy, E? Why why can't we be happy? I'm talking about us. Like not not you and me, but us as as we as the family. If we're not running, he's passing. If he's not passing, he's like what 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 is it? I, I, I think it's a combination of two things. Number one, this is the most sports media driven fueled uh, market in the United States. Like there are more radio that. stations and more ra uh, more podcasts and more writers and more blogs and more about Philly sports than any other market in the United States. And they're all competing for clicks. So sometimes the most outlandish shit you say is the one that gets you the most views and the most engagements. You're in marketing. I'm in marketing. Uh, we both understand this, right? Everyone's I, I want to say dumb stuff so bad. You're right. I do. I want to say, more but, 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 but it is, let's, let, 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 let's call it like we see it. I mean, that, that's, is what it is. Some of the, you know, I don't know, what was it? Six, seven, maybe even 10 years ago. It, it's when the Skip Baylesses came out, the Stephen A. Smiths came out, the hot take artists, and then the entire industry kind of moved away from this. When I say the kind of industry, I mean sports reporting, sports talk. It's almost like the news, right? The news got yeah. so – news used to be the news. It just used to be the news. And then, I don't know, what, 10 years ago, it got very political. You're either this way or that way. 
And you needed to do that because you needed to speak to your echo chamber audience, but also too, you need to piss off the other side because that's where you get that engagement. That's where you get that heat. That's where the algorithm loves you, right? Yeah. And so I feel like a lot of a lot of sports media is just there's such an abundance of it. A writer back in the day when we used to look at the Inquirer or whatever it might be, and you know we read Mark Echo. Mark Echo was Mark Echo. Les Bowen was Les Bowen. They just yeah. had the report and they had to give their opinion, and that was it. Nowadays they even get noticed because the market is so flooded with just everything that you know the the real ones are the ones that have to grind it out harder and but will have their voices heard because they'll have credibility instead of being a hot take artist but the hot take artist is going to get there easy street quicker you know what i mean and the other part of that the other because it was the second part as i just think that this is such a we say to, we throw the word passion around quite a bit right and we use it as an excuse for a lot of things but it really is every it's hard to talk to somebody on the streets that isn't somehow invested in the sports teams in Philadelphia. So as many of different people as there is out there, as many as different thoughts and different ideologies, there's going to be different opinions as far as the sports teams as well. Specifically on Jalen, I'll just say, you know, my two cents is take a look at Donovan. Donovan was a runner the first two and he lit the league on fire. I mean, he was on the cover of Madden, uh, yep. he was in the MVP candidates. It, it, it's kind of takes it. And then Donovan had to learn how to be a pocket passer and something that Jalen has not gotten enough credit for. I mean, first year he started, it was he's got a noodle arm. Well, then he worked on his mechanics. And, and, and now all of a sudden, it, you never hear noodle arm again because yeah. he worked on his mechanics, he worked on his basics. His pocket presence this year. Is, is phenomenal. It's not even, it's the night and day from last year. It is absolutely phenomenal. So that's the next progression on him being a quarterback. And plus you want him to make that progression because that sort of pocket quarterback, that translates into longevity. We got a lot invested in this guy. We're going to continue to have a lot invested in this guy. The more he can learn to be a pocket passer first and then use his legs as a weapon, this is Donovan all over again. But it's Donovan with weapons. Yeah, and, and we, it's thought of it with To and you know good, better weapons. Which you know at that point I felt like I waited my whole life just to have a weapon on the team, and uh, I the fumbles bother me more than his interceptions. When he has an interception, he he had a misread. There might have been a tip ball, bounced off a knee. Rocks yeah. down somewhere. I got there's so many things where like I feel like you know not even being a homer. This is for any quarterback. Half their interceptions aren't even their interceptions. They should be put on a, another player. So right. I don't mind those because when he has an interception, he focuses right in and he's driven the team right back down for a score. So I know he puts that out of his mind and it's fine. The Rams. The Rams. Yeah, yes. Ball security <laughs> bothers me because um, as much as he has pocket awareness, when our line is dinged up like it is, he's not a throw the ball away first kind of guy. He is a I'm going to make a play because he can make a play kind of guy, which sometimes will lead you to fumble. So it's a mix and match and a mismatch of that. But again, that's the maturation of still a young player and the line holding up that. So before we move on to just the regular, the rest of the season, <coughs> I want to ask you a question. Do you mm -hmm. think that the secondary is just absolutely abysmal or do you think that they're dinged up and the line doesn't get pressure this year until the second half? I, I I think it's a combination of, like, listen, it, the, the exit wasn't great on this guy, but uh, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson did a lot for the secondary, did a lot for the team. He was a nickel corner with the Saints, and when you have a safety that can cover, it takes away a lot of weapons. It gives you a lot of flexibility in the middle of the field, and this team is kind of getting eaten up in the middle of the field. Uh, and he was Bradbury, a ball hawk too. Yeah, yeah, he led the league in interception. So, yeah. I mean, it, on the outside, Bradbury's not having a good year. I, I think Slay's doing – Slay's on par. That, that That's fine. I feel like our secondary as a whole has just gotten slower. And the secondary, more so than almost any two positional groups in the game, um, Defensive line and the secondary have a very symbiotic relationship. If 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 you can get to the quarterback quick enough, you don't have to have a great secondary. If you got a lockdown secondary, the, the defensive line can 
it can cover up some deficiencies on the defensive line. We have a nasty defensive line, but man, it's quick. We're getting slanted to death over the middle of the field. I just think the linebackers in the secondary, with the exceptions of Slay, just isn't quick enough. And I think that's where that's where they're kind of getting exposed a little bit. So I'm going to put it out there for myself as homerism, but the, the defensive line, we're getting hit with quick stuff, so the defensive line isn't getting there. But yes. in the second half, our D-line with the rotating and the young lines, they start caving in and wearing them out, and then they get that pressure in, and then it relieves the pressure off of a maligned and much injured secondary. Somebody yeah. told me Bradbury fell off a cliff. I'm like, he just came back off of injury. I, I, my phone was going crazy about I, you, you talk <coughs> about blanket ship. You should never like this guy. This guy needs, and next thing I know, it gets interception and my phone stops buzzing. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. his first game back from injury again. Yeah. I don't presume, like, I, you know, you do jujitsu stuff like that. Like, you, when you're fighting, your body doesn't feel right. Like, I've wrestled, like, I, I've had, I've wrestled after a concussion when I wasn't right still, and I still went out there. Like, you just because you're out there doesn't mean you're fully healthy. And so you, but you got to be there for your team because we were dropping like flags and nobody else. So I'm, I'm trying to give that caveat to say that as long as the the secondary, which isn't as playing as well, because we don't have the ball hawks and there are all young guys in there due to injuries. If they can hold on to the second half, Hassan is coming. Sweat is coming. Yes. Carter yeah. is coming. Uh, I don't know where Smith's been. I don't know if they got him in the vault, but again, he had that injury early. So when people say he's not, get, I was like, we don't know if he's actually hurt because a lot of teams like to, hide those things um right. and mask those things but there's a reason why he's not out there i, I would hope that it's not because he can't play i would hope because it's that but we don't know so uh we're we're, we're definitely on the same slot with that on the secondary um uh, you ready for the second half of the season you, you ready for this uh quote-unquote gauntlet i am i am because i i just like i previously said you know last year's team you can't judge it off of last year's team. Last year's team was was last year's team. This year's defense is looking a little better, a little different. I shouldn't say better. It's looking different. Same thing goes with all the teams that were under the gauntlet. I, I always kind of chuckle and smirk to myself when people start making predictions right when the schedule is <laughs> is presented um, because they're chalking up dubs and log, you know, L's and W's and L's hey, and hey, W. Hey. I know. Look at this. You're, you're talking to a guy that does that, and I was right. I had him at eight and one, so don't don't talk Listen, to me I, about I, that. I, I, I do it too. I mean, yeah. I, 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 I do it too. But the fact of the matter is, you don't know what you're getting until that season starts, right? So the Bills do not look like the Bills of last no. year. No, the Chiefs do not look like the Chiefs of last year. To be honest Cal with you, no one does. No one does. No one does. It's a weird. It's a weird. Not. Like there's there's no I feel like last year like you could take the top five teams, and it was Chiefs, Bills, Dolphins, Eagles, Forty uh, Niners. I could probably even get Bengals and and like you could say like this is the top tier of the NFL. Right now, if you're doing power rankings, it's not as clear cut and easy as it used to be. Like you're like I don't know who do I put at three? Who do I put at four? Who do I put at five? The league, I think, in general is just a lot more – I don't want to say meh because that's not the word I want to use because it's always still exciting. But but it's a, it's a lot more even, Steven, right? It's a little bit more of an even playing field. Well, that's what they want, right? That The whole thing we've heard for since 2005 is parity. We want parity. And so this is what parity looks like. Some of the good teams get beat by bad teams. Some of the uh, good teams beat each other. The, the one thing I'll say to what you were saying earlier that cracks me up the most, again, when this a fan or our sports article thing, last year, the Eagles haven't beaten anybody. Who knows if they're going to make it to the Super Bowl? They're blowing everybody out. All the games are too easy. There's no adversity this year. They're winning by three. They win by four. They win late. They yeah. get a W. Oh, they lost. Yeah. There, there's too much adversity. There's, there, there, there's too much stress on the team. They're barely getting these wins, and they're not doing anything. They, they don't look like they did last year. So which one is it? Do you want them to have a cakewalk and mm -hmm. just blow people out every single game, and then you say, meh, those teams are trash, or mm -hmm. do you want them to go against the first-place schedule when everybody is hunting them? They are the hunted. They didn't win the Super Bowl, but they went there. And most teams, the, the year they lose the Super Bowl, fall off a cliff. So for us to be eight and one, but you're still complaining, like, well, they're not blowing anybody out. What what do you what makes you happy? I want adversity now so that later on when we get 
to the playoffs in the Super yeah. Bowl. We've already had the adversity because we had the adversity, yeah. to be honest, in the Super Bowl, and we came out yeah. short by three points. So w- w- pick your poison. Yeah, it was so funny last year. It was, well, you ain't beat nobody. You almost lost to the Colts. You ain't beat nobody. You almost lost to the Bears. You ain't beat nobody. You ain't beat nobody. Wait till next year till you're playing a first-place schedule. Now we're playing a first-place schedule. Granted, none of them have been all that pretty, but we're still coming away with the same record, and it's it's fucking crickets. Yeah. It's crickets. Yeah, because cool. like like what uh, all right what like what do you want what's going to make what's going to prove to you that this Philadelphia Eagles team is a winning culture they're fine like last year a lot of times we got off to a slow start but then we pick it up and make the second half adjustments and just steamroll teams and we were rolling teams and 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 this year and we didn't know that's the thing last year I, I kept saying to myself I want to see them come from behind I want to see them in a tight one I want to see them not do the typical Eagles 2022 thing, which was get off to a hot lead. And then somewhere in the third or fourth quarter, you take your foot off the gas and allow the team to get back into the game. This Eagles team, I mean, it's one of the things I'm most satisfied with. Every week they display another way to win. And it's just, you know, not to use your name, but it's gritty. You know what I mean? They, They know how to get ahead early. They know how to come from behind like they did against Washington. They know how to extend a long fourth quarter drive and just nine minutes left. You ain't even going to get the ball. You ain't even going to have a chance to come back. Like against the Rams, uh, a, a game where it's just coming down to the wire like the cow. Like they're showing oh, everything fell ways apart in the Cowboys game. Yeah. Bradbury's out, Slay's down. <laughs> like the whole, like I think I might have saw you run out on the field. Because <laughs> we were just dropping like flies, bro. And again, yeah, man, that's yeah. scary. And I, I will say that the biggest thing that bothers me the most is the coaching. Nick seems like a different kind of coach in second halves. But again, hopefully he's learning through these mistakes. Like, dude, on third and three, how about not a bomb pass? How about a run play to get fourth and one so you might be able to touch push it? How about that, that's Brian Johnson, man? I, oh, I don't know I, what's I, going I, on with I, that. You know, you know what I say about that? I say every yeah. time something bad goes wrong, Nick tells me it's on him. And so I, I'm putting it on both of them and I start with the head coach because that's all I ever hear. Well, well no, like, you yeah, should because you know. the offensive game plan, like let's make no bones about it. Like Nick Sirianni once upon a time passed off yes play calling responsibilities to Sean Steichen. Gaina didn't tell him to. It was a collective agreement mm-hmm. on that one. But, uh, you know, one of the benefits of that is Nick got to be an in-game manager. And, listen, Nick's fingerprints were still all over that game plan. You know what I mean? Like, the offense collectively puts together the game plan. And there's little pockets. Here's the play group of plays that we're going to run on uh, third and long, third and short. Well, you know, the running. Fourth fourth and and two on your own 29. Yeah. they, They run the special teams out. The offense looks over it, and he's like, go ahead. Like so, he's yeah. definitely like involved. So that, that's why I just say, Nick, I'm. It, it's just an easier thing to do than just to bash on a young coordinator because you know they're 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 learning on the job too, and uh, I just want them all to figure it out. Which is again, they're winning and they are, but there's certain moments where it's like, hey, we we can't have that, and we've got to get past it. Uh, next question, real quick, not question, just a statement. Andy Reid off the bye week is a problem. Nick Sirianni off the bye week so far has been pretty good, too. Yeah, man. I mean, you give those boys some rest and some extra time to to put together a game plan, and then and magic things happen. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to that game. I'm look, I, I, Anytime you give the Eagles or Jalen Hurts in, in, in particular any sort of excuse to Michael Jordan, I know you didn't like the guy. Yeah. Michael Jordan it and just man manufacture some sort of disrespect, whether it be the two a thing, two and Jalen, and going into that Miami game. Uh, J- Jalen Love, he's got a little Jordan in him where he will just manufacture disrespect. And let us not forget in the offseason while the rookies were doing their annual rookie show, by accident, yeah. never flaunted to the media. By accident, it was discovered that Jalen Hurts' lock screen on his phone was the wrong color confetti pouring down on them. Um, how many times do you have to look at that screen and see that picture to unlock your phone per day? It's a, it, it's a lot. So and, and I'm sure he's going to take that personal. And I'm sure you talked about it before. Things like that with the media are things that irk me the most. You ask him about it. Like, what is it? What do you think he has it there for? Because yeah. it meant something to him. When you, when you sit there and you watch, 
you know, Cassiano's out there watching the other team celebrate last year in the World Series. You think, it, hey, I want to get back here. You're asking questions of players to make them have pain or shame of something to get them caught in a gotcha moment, and it makes me angry. When a player says, hey, I'm fine, I'm playing, and you ask him four <coughs> more times about his life, yeah, and then he terrible. wants to get yeah, up and I leave, know, I know, I'm like, I know, I, I, I know, I know, I know I you know. got a job, bro, but, like, come on. They're human beings, and you're, you're smarter. I, I would hope that we're smarter than that, but we're not sometimes. Uh, you know, we'll yeah, no, you're, you're, you're the guy, you're the guy you're going to ask it the fourth time, but you're going to word it in a very specific way where you're going to get him to spill the beans because you're smarter than everybody else. Like, come on, Dave. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and there's other smart guys sitting right around you. So, uh, for all the record and for all the things that matter, uh, who are you taking in, in their prime Eagles halfway through a season T or AJ Brown? Me on the spot. I am putting you on the um, spot. No, it don't end up on a t-shirt, E. <laughs> don't end up on a t-shirt. Yeah, I mean, I mean, oh, geez. So uh, I, I, I got, I got to go to on it. I mean, he's a hall of famer. <laughs> he, he, you know, what I mean, he. If you look up the, I don't have it in front of me. So but he's I, I don't, even, I don't even care about. All the time. I don't even care about the stats. I, you know what? Because it's funny. I here's I, I'm, I say the exact same answer, and my caveat is, I'm only nine games in, bro. I'm not halfway through the right. season. Yeah, yeah. To again, what we said earlier, when when we got To, I I I I've not, I've only cried one time watching football, <laughs> and that's when we won the Super Bowl. And my dad has passed away; he did not get to watch it with me. I watched it with another mm. buddy of mine. His he father fell. had passed away, and so we watched it together. Our dads like that. I cried like that was that was something. But other than that, when we got To, I almost cried because all I ever wanted in my life at the time was just a bona <laughs> fide wide receiver, and for him to go out. Do what he did when he broke his leg. I was like, "Oh my god!" And then he got back for the Super Bowl. The feeling of To, besides the antics, besides the Hall of Fame, the feeling and the joy is un unmatched of what he did yeah. for me in that small window of time. So when you ask me, and I'm looking at AJ Brown, and I love AJ Brown, and the celebrations, and the dunking, and the perfect smile, it's great. But I gotta, he gotta finish the season. <laughs> Before yeah. I give him my team <laughs> season. So I'm, I'm and, right and, with and, you. And, so. and, and, and listen, it, it's like arguing like, oh, what do you prefer more, a Ferrari or a Lamborghini? Yeah, you know I mean, we're still talking about the best of the best of the best of the best. Then let's not lose sight of this because, you know, we're we're in agreement, but we would get a lot of pushback on this take, right? We would yeah. get a lot of pushback on this because not everyone was – you know that are that are slinging opinions were alive to or, or or old enough to remember watching To. When To was with the Eagles, it was just To. Yeah, it was still Eddie Mitchell, Todd Pinkston, Chad Lewis. Those were the other options. AJ Brown has the benefit of you can't always double team me because we got Smitty and we've got Dallas Goddard. Now he's going to be out for a while, but you know he's going to come back healthy in yeah. in, a, in four weeks in a month or so. And so the offense overall is just better in AJ's scenario than it was in with T.O. and Donovan because it was just T.O. and Donovan and yeah. Westbrook. Yeah. West Cookie. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm right with you. So I put you on the spot for a funsies. Uh, who, who are your top three coaches currently coaching in the league? Who, who, who's, who do you like? I, I, as nerdy as he is, I mean, I'm, I'm not, in no particular order. No I'm, not, order. I'm not about to, I'm not about to rank him. I, I, I do like Mike McDaniels down there, uh, in, in, uh, in Miami. I, I think he's just got a new wave about him. He's got an intelligence about him. He's got a sort of a nerdy swag about him and, and his players like him. I'm going to throw Nick Sirianni, uh, up there as well, because, you know, you can X and O me to death. Fine. We're, he is the master of building a positive winning culture and a locker room that connects. And not every coach can do that. And not every coach can do that. And, you know, uh, a lot of this game, this, this game of football that we so much love is about culture and about winning mentality and about, I mean, you can look at, at other Philly sports teams and realize that there's a disc, there's a difference between what the Eagles are doing and what everyone, you know, some of the other teams are doing. And then just based on off of history, I mean, even though he's struggling this year and he's struggling mightily, I mean, Bill Belichick is still goaded. I mean, I, I, how, how am I going to take one season of, of 
you know, losing record. That's the thing. Like people think, oh, you know, Bill Belichick has one losing season. I, I feel like with the head nods, you're gonna disagree with me there. Oh yeah, I'm just I'm I'm letting you I'm letting you cook yourself. All right, no, 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 no. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna letting take you cook yourself out. Uh, no, the, I know I'm lowering myself into the quicksand, the, the, and you're just the, reeling it the, down. The, the, you're like you the, almost the, got him, almost the, got him. The the the, the cheater. The guy who got caught cheating, the guy whose assistants have gone out into the league and got caught cheating, the guy who lost, arguably the greatest quarterback who was also part of a cheating scandal. Well, he went one on his own, and now this guy is out here. But before he had Tom, he wasn't a winner. And Tom left, he's not a winner. Gets caught cheating, not allowed to cheat no more, not a winner. Every single assistant that has left him, his tree is trash. His tree is trash. Andy Reid got a tree of 90,000 people. Oh, my God. I forgot it. So oh, no, no, no. I, I got you. No, 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 no. I'm, I, 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 let, I let you cook yourself because I got you on the spot. I know you've been busy traveling. This is like one of your first days. Off. I, that's right. I'm getting you on the record call. So I, I'm coming in to save you, all right? I, I got. I actually like your list, you know, because you, you you went for historical greatness. I, I do like McDaniels. I like his swaggy pee. And, of course, I, I the thing that I love about Nick Sirianni is the thing I can't stand about him. When he's out there shaking his caboose in your face like, ah. I love it. <laughs> well, sometimes when Hertz has to go over there and say, "Hey, calm down, Unc." Like you know what I mean? That's what gets me. But I, I, I you know, obviously, I know you know Andy Reid is deserves to be on that list. Um, I, I'm going to throw Harbaugh from the Ravens up on that list. If it, it, it still amazes me how everyone, whenever they bring up his greatness, they start with, "Well, you know, he was a special teams coach for the Eagles." He has far surpassed that list of things. Um, and then the last one I'm going to say. Is Mike Tomlin? This was a trick question. I was gonna whatever three you picked, I was gonna pick the other three. So don't worry. <laughs> Mike Tomlin does a magic trick of they're the most penalized, they have the least yards, they've scored the least points, but they're still five and three, and he's never had a losing record. I, I don't know how he does it. He's a magician. So you, you take a McDaniel's. I actually I found out his story. Something I usually don't care about with coaches, but his story is amazing. If you haven't amazing, seen yeah. a video of his story, go like you'll be inspired. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. Ball boy getting autograph no getting autographs. Yep. Uh, the, the, just it's just a great story. His his story is, is an amazing really story. So uh, I I do love him. I love his. He reminds me of like you said, like just the young cool. He he gets it. He reminds me of every kid that played Madden that wanted to grow up and be a coach and ended up being good yeah. at it. So, I, so a layer of this is putting me on the spot and me go inside. What's turning in here is oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. <laughs> I got to think of three coaches, top coaches, and completely whiffed on Andy Reid. So, but even if I was to re revise that list, it would be Andy Reid, and I would still put Belichick. Listen until. until until like if he goes in the next five years sucking, okay, you know, then 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 he's going to get knocked off. But just historically, I, I I can't argue with the success, cheating or no cheating, Tom Brady or no Tom Brady. Uh, you know, he was he, he's kind of the mastermind who built Lawrence Taylor and redefined that position and the defensive coordinator of the Giants. So just historically, he, he, I I just I can't look over the guy. And that's why you look over the guy. And and that's why I'll tell everybody I meet to the end of time that you're a better man than me because he ain't for gays. He ain't never getting on my <laughs> list. He's Bill and Cheat. Is Tom, Tom Tom Brady's not my goat. Joe Montana is my goat. I, I, I don't even <laughs> like the 49ers. I'm still putting him up there as goat status. Okay, that is just, it's just the frustration and the anger in my heart. And they lost yeah. to to Eli Manning twice. And they lost to Nick Foles. So and, and they cheat. And I can't stand them. And I don't like them. And it's terrible. Uh <laughs> so I, I, I can't disagree with you there. Like, I can't disagree I, with you. I literally was gonna go. I, I had like six to seven in my <coughs> mind. And I was like, oh, whatever three he misses, I'm gonna pick up the other one. So uh totally fine. Uh um, a setup. It was That's definitely a stone de cold setup. Definitely a setup. Um are you worried about the Bills? You know, yes and no. I'm up for the challenge. I don't think any, you know, if if anything, this Philadelphia Eagles team has proven to me this year, especially going back to back with the Jets and the Miami Dolphins, that we are more than capable of beating anybody. We're also more capable than shit in the bed and losing anybody. But that's the NFL in 2023, yes. right? So uh, the, I, I, 
this, this piggyback off of something that you said earlier, I want this team battle tested. I want this team going against the best of the best. I want this team because they're uh, they're freight training their way to the number one overall seed and the road to the Super Bowl goes through Philadelphia. It is inevitable. This is going to happen. And um, when it does. Um, unless it's Detroit, but that's because Detroit's nope, got the nope. easiest schedule now. Yeah, well, well, we can't knock them on that, though, because it was no, the same no. shit that we were, people were saying about and, us last and, year. And that's what I try to explain to people. I'm like, they almost made the playoffs last year. They were really close. They didn't. I was like, but they still got to go out there and beat people. And and you play who you play when you play them. I, I, I There's no excuses. You Like I said, people say, oh, you lost to the Jets. Yes, we lost to the Jets without Aaron Rodgers. It happens sometimes. It, and, and, and you can go across the league and look at the Dallas Cowboys. That, that, that's why I didn't razz them too much when they lost to Arizona because I'm like, listen, we're all going to – you wait. Our turn is coming. We're going to yeah. have a Bobo loss. Our Bobo loss came against Washington last year. Nobody saw yeah. that coming. And people are panicking about the Jets. I'm like, nah, we did this last year. We did it last year. We got smacked in the face. We ate our little humble pie. We all ate our crow. And then we battled all five wins. We went about our business, right? But I want this team – Battle tested and confident going into the playoffs, feeling a way whether because it's going to be the one seed. It's yeah. a freight train. It's inevitable. Either get on board or get the f out of the way. It's going to happen. The road to the Super Bowl will travel through Philadelphia. And when we are defending that house, I want this team having the attitude, being like, I don't care who the hell you put in front of us. We've played better. I don't care who's standing in front of us. We know we can beat them because we either already have Cowboys, and I, and I have full confidence that we're beating the 49ers, but, like, who who, who else? Who yeah. else are you going to throw in front of us? Who else you got? Not anybody else. And I want that mentality going into the playoffs. And that's the mentality that I have, too. What, what, what trips you got planned coming up? You got any trips left? Um, believe it or not, yes and no. So the, my travel was pretty much done, and then I found out for the first time ever, Black Ready. For the first time ever in my 41 years on this planet, your boy E Rock is, is going to be traveling to Dallas. Oh. He's going to be going to the belly of the beast, the, the infestation nest of the cockroaches, the origin of, of everything that is evil in the NFL universe. I will be headed directly into the Death Star with blasters of blazing, hoping to blow that MFR up. Uh, I, I I cannot wait, but but also too, it's a big it's a it's a big moment for me because you know how I feel about Cowboys and Cowboys fans and when they come to Philadelphia and what we do and everything and it means a lot. And now I'm going there. I'm going to their house. So it's it's a big moment for me. I was offered an opportunity to go, and I just, I just don't want to go. It makes me angry thinking about going there. It makes me angry thinking about being there. Yeah, like if it was a playoff game, I might go. Like you know what I mean? Whatever. Oh no no no, 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 no! Just yeah. to be there is like gross. So you go and, there for me. There's gonna be a lot of Eagles there too. Yeah. Oh, that's there's gonna first. be a lot of Eagles. There. Michael Parsons. Oh, Cowboys fans, I need y'all to go out there and take over the link. Like what? What? Please. Please. What? You don't know football. Do you think that you're from the area? You know better. Than <sighs> what are you talking about? He, uh, what are you talking about? He wants to be an Eagle so bad. It's it's literally like what everybody dreams him. of Mike Trout wanting. It seems yeah. like this is what he wants, and he shouldn't be allowed to have a. It, it's very hard to have a podcast by yourself. I talk crazy <coughs> all the time into a microphone. When you're by yourself and you don't have someone to bounce ideas off of, and you're a player that's been busting your butt for 14 hours a day and then you go sit down in front of a microphone you're bound to say a lot of ridiculous stuff i mean look at jerry jones he's not even out there busting his butt so you know it, it's yeah, funny talking about glory holes and glory it, it holes. Just, just, just just to just to gear off but same path just gear off a little bit isn't that a credit to what the kelsey brothers are doing with their podcast i'm not sure if you watch it i watch it religiously what an entertaining like uh well when they break down their own games, they're, they're always very respectful. They never say anything wild, but it's always entertaining. And they give you, like, little insights, but not enough to kind of spoil stuff. And it's like, man, they are just so good together. And that show is so excellent. So I, I do watch it. I don't watch it religiously. But 
if they were separated and they both had their own show, they would both It'd be suck. insane and they'd have huge problems. It wouldn't even suck. Yeah. They would just uh, – Travis would be – I don't know. He he'd be like banned from the internet if he was by himself without yeah. somebody to reel him in. Uh, but to that's what I mean about having someone else there, and yeah. they're not run by a Bleacher Report. It's kind of like their own in-house thing. The company that they're working with is is a smaller, off the off the tilt brand. Where Bleacher Report is like, hey, go out there on this island and set things on fire so we can get views, as yeah. opposed to hey, you guys are family. You know, your kids are in the house. Your mother might be by. Let's keep it not PG-13, but family rated because you guys grew up together and you know how to play off each other. Because there was a moment where, you know, they got argument and he walked off the show. I mean, because that's how Kelsey is. Um, <clears throat> that's how Jason is. He gets hot-headed sometimes. But yeah. that's brotherly stuff where one brother knows how to get to the other one and when yeah. to. And he knew he should have stopped, but he still did anyway because, again, they're brothers. So yeah. it, it's the dynamic <coughs> is what makes it so good and so real. You know, it's just like when you deal with your kids, you know how to get one of them going versus getting the other one going and your wife knows how to get you. So Absolutely. that's great because they're not by themselves. It's it, They shouldn't leave these players alone on an island. So the show is great. Those guys are great. Uh, Jason for president, his his brother could be like the VP or something. Don't give him any Sexy, real, sexiest man alive. Yeah, don't give him any real imp important job. Like, you know, I mean, keep him away from the button and everything, but he can be out there shaking hands and kissing babies for the people. You know, what I mean, breaking it down. Uh, so, yay, you're going to Dallas. Um, I, I expect the videos to be awesome and amusing, and you're going to find all the weirdest people in the world at that game. So uh, I'm, I'm yeah, excited yeah. about that. Uh, I'm uh, not excited to breathe the same air as these people, but, uh, but if the Eagles, when the just, Eagles win just, this game, I'm going to be absolutely, you might catch me on crossing broad the next yeah. day. Like there might be a, like, he got arrested and he's in cuffs and we got to start a go fund me to uh, you know, fund his bail money. Uh, uh, you'll, you'll, <laughs> you'll, 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 you'll be bail for the sunsets, brother. Ain't no worried about that. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I, I appreciate y'all in advance. <laughs> in advance. Uh, I'm going to link up all your stuff in the show notes and everything. Like I said, just thanks for hopping on, talking to me. You know what I mean? Like I said, uh, the, the last game for this break was just so epically, amazingly, stressfully, badly good. And uh, I just wanted to catch up with you and chop it up. Now that your voice is a little bit better and you can kick your feet up. Uh, you going to watch this trash band yeah, again tonight, you. Thursday night? Oh, yeah, I'm going to watch the trash band again. But let me ask you a question. Have, have you ever, in your Eagles fandom, been more excited for a buy in your life oh i i have not i've yeah. i have not you, you know you don't know what else too i've never in my life I, as far as i can we're the same age so it's going to be the same thing this is the hardest year of football complete schedule wise that i've ever seen in my life because what, what you said is true uh some teams have fallen off and they're beating it's more of them beating each other up than falling off the, the yeah. afc is is eating their own lunch but I look at the schedule and I looked at it from the beginning. And I'm like, all the divisional games, like, I don't care what you think the team is. They see each other twice a year. They know each other. They hate each other. They always play each other yeah. tough. They know your ins and outs. And right. then just the schedule. Dude, it's not easy. No. It is not an easy schedule. And the second half is about to come up. I don't care who's injured, what's injured. We've got injuries. But that's my yeah. favorite thing when they complain, like, like, you act like we didn't have a lineman out, like we didn't start Steen. I didn't know who yeah. Steen was. I'm sitting there trying to Google. I'm looking at uh, YouTube highlights, trying to figure out if I'm happy or upset about this. You know, I don't know what's going on. So yeah. it is. I, 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 I'm happy to put my feet up and not yes. worry about it. Also, uh, since you're, you, you know, you, you, you were born and bred playing basketball, dunking on people. You know what I'm saying? So you know, the Sixers out here being six and one got something to look at. Uh, yeah. uh, apparently, apparently, soccer. The dupes are out there duping. The Flyers are breaking out dog masks before the season even starts. I don't know what's up with that, but I mean they're winning a couple of games. So we got we got something else to look at just or look at nothing. Rest your eyes and rest your voice for a week. But yeah, this I, is the I, best I, buy I, ever. I'll tell you, normally football season goes like this for me. Week one, oh my God, this is gonna be great. We've got 17 weeks, not including the playoffs. This is gonna last forever. And then by week 14, I blink and went, What the hell just happened? It like goes by in a blink of an eye. I, I've never been so relieved for a bye week in my life. And people are like, oh, this is a halfway point. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. it's We're only halfway done. We're, we're only, oh, my God, in the second half is harder than the first. Like, I, I am mentally and physically, emotionally, like, just kind of, I need a bye week. 
it's not me it's them yeah yeah uh but i need i need i need i need a bye week like i need oxygen <laughs> Dude, like I said, I I I said right the, on Monday, I was like, I need an ice bath, I need some treatment, I need a heat <laughs> bath, and I ain't even done anything. So you you're definitely in, like I said when I talked to you and your boy, I, I was, yeah, it was it was it's rough out there. That but again, the, the, when you say passion, it's not a bad thing. I tell people all the time, I'm like, I don't make fun of people that go to thirty thousand concerts. If music's your jam, that's fine. You love yeah, to go to the movies, yeah. you love the theater, you love plays. Like that's what being a person is about. Like it, it, it's fandom is fandom. It's just what you're a fan of, and this is one of the things that we're most passionate about. Uh, so yeah, we need a break. Uh, go, go meditate. Put your feet up. And uh, thanks for being on the show. Like I said, thanks for watching. Yeah, Everybody made it this far. Follow all the links and all the things and all the E-Rocks and, and, and get some humor and stuff in your life. And we'll talk to you later.